Stephen's made his way onto the set, which means it must be time for business. We're starting with fresh hopes of uh, stimulus today, aren't we, sir, Stephen, for the Eurozone economy? Yeah, that's right. It's D-Day for Mario Draghi. The question is, what is he going to do to help the Eurozone economy? Expectations are sky high for this meeting of the European Central Bank. Its chief has already signalled that he's ready to look at doing more. And this is why inflation has stayed well below the ECB's target of 2% and even fallen into negative territory in February uh, when prices fell. Now, that's despite interest rates being cut into negative territory. The deposit rate is at the moment uh, minus 0.3%. That means the commercial banks have to pay to deposit money in the ECB's coffers. Well, let's talk through a little bit of the detail of what we're expecting from today with Naeem Aslam, our, at this stage, resident ECB expert, <laughs> chief market analyst with Avatrade. Thanks for coming into us. Uh, what options does Mario Draghi have available to him today? Thanks ever so much for having me, as always. Draghi is combating this element of price stability after years of stasis. Now, the, any chances of having another recession, they are a little bit hasty because it has improved. But what he's going to do today would be that he needs to once again assure the market that the central bank is consistently providing its abutment. What options does he have on the table? He could always cut down the interest rate and move that deposit rate further lower into the deep into the negative territory. Secondly, they could always inflate their monthly asset purchase program by incrementing the limit, which is at $60 billion. Because let's not forget, they have constrained their own hands by this limit of $60 billion by bringing certain conditions. So as you correctly uh, already pointed out, that back in December when I was with you, the expectations were sky high at that time as well, that, OK, Draghi is going to come back with a big bazooka. However, it wasn't. And then what happened in the market, we have seen a massive rally in the euro. And I do believe that once again, we have a massive expectations. And then there is a qualm among investors, perhaps that we will see a deja vu or reverberate of what we have seen back in um, December. So people could be disappointed then? Possibly. There is a strong possibility. And this is why we have not seen that much of a selling pressure against the euro. It's uh, still trading at a very uh, stout level. Because if, the, if Draghi is going to come back, and then the expectations are that we could have a possibility of 20 basis point cut, that is a very hawkish slant by the ECB, then we should see euro trading a lot more weaker and feeble against the dollar. Now, we've had um, this financial crisis for well over five years now, and we keep hearing about extra stimulus, extra stimulus. I mean, wh wh why is it not having the effect that, it, that it's desired to have? Because it's been going on for years, hasn't it? It's more of an addiction, like uh, someone is addicted to cocaine or some element of that. However, if you look at certain elements which were well beyond the ECB control. For example, the revolting and grisly rat that we have seen in the oil market. It's not something that the ECB has ever expected or any of the major firms expected on the market. Now, what that has done, it has put more pressure on the ECB's forward guidance in relation to their inflation and in relation to their growth. So I think what is quite imperative in today's uh, it, this entire meeting would be how they would uh, combat the new inflation f uh, forward guidance. Uh, it's an interesting one to see as well. That people are talking about this idea of helicopter money, where the banks essentially throw money out of a helicopter. They actually give individuals money to try and boost the economy. Is that at all on the table, do you think? Uh, no, I, d I, I envage that they do have an enormous amount of other options because he keeps on banging or playing the same beat that we have enough tools to... Uh, to come uh, to maintain the price stability. So helicopter money, even though it does sound astoundingly very um, ambitious, but we don't envisage that will be the outcome today. And, and just very briefly, should we be worried about the effects that negative rates are having on commercial banks? Because they're saying they can't earn as much money if they can't charge as much for loans. Like, this has been the result throughout this year because at the start of this year, the sell-off was primarily on the basis of this, that the banking sector could have a very flimsy foundation. It's already facing an era of a very weak earnings. And 
pushing these deposit rates into further negative territory is a matter of anger among investors. Okay, Naeem Asa, I'm Chief Market Analyst at Avatrade. Thank you for joining us here this morning. Thanks. Yeah, Naeem, if you do hear where that helicopter is, can I go and stand on it? That's <laughs> the most important thing. Um, what about the market, Stephen? How are they reacting to Well, this? those high hopes for Mario Draghi and the European Central Bank are playing out too on the Asian markets today. We're seeing the Nikkei uh, closing up over 1% at the end of the day. Uh, and across the Asian markets, generally speaking, we've got gains except on the Shanghai Composite, which is down by 2%. Let's turn to Germany next, uh, the world's biggest tourism fair that's um, opened in Berlin. Yeah, it's under a bit of uh, tension, I suppose, uh, this particular event, as holiday bookings uh, by Germans for trips abroad this summer are lower than usual for this time of year. And security's a big concern for them in choosing destinations, as Delano D'Souza now explains. Warm weather and pristine beaches were once the sole factors to look out for when booking a holiday. But as the world's largest tourism fair gets underway, an old concern is resurfacing. More and more Germans are worried about security as they look to their summer plans. Bookings to once popular destinations like Tunisia have slumped following two terror attacks targeting tourists last year. Industry experts are confident, however, that things will change. From the past, we've learned that the reluctance to travel to those areas vanishes as the tourists regain trust into a crisis region again. We expect to see that as well for countries in North Africa. But in the short term, tour operators have a challenge on their hands. A recent consumer research study found that one million fewer Germans had booked their summer holidays by the end of January as compared with the previous year. In 2015, Turkey was the third most popular destination for German holidaymakers, but bookings to the country have slumped almost 40 percent. Many people are very hesitant to book trips abroad for their summer holidays to destinations like Turkey. While the travel industry is hoping for a speedy turnaround in its fortunes, it may have to accept the fact that holidaymakers will continue to flock to safer destinations like Spain and Portugal until threats to foreign travellers elsewhere are removed. Some more of today's business headlines for you next. The head of Volkswagen in the United States has left the company six months after the emissions cheating scandal emerged at the carmaker. Michael Horn is leaving Volkswagen by mutual agreement, according to a statement from the firm. His departure comes as Volkswagen is continuing to negotiate with US authorities over possible fixes for the issues that affected more than half a million diesel cars in the United States. And the French bank Société Générale is to cut 550 jobs over the next five years. The cuts are going to affect workers in their customer service centres in France. It's part of a cost-cutting drive at the bank's retail arm. And finally, Stephen has been uh, looking at the ranking of the world's most expensive cities. Yes, and Singapore has come out on top for the third year in a row. This is a ranking that's compiled by the Economist Intelligence Unit. It compares the cost of living for companies so they can calculate relocation packages for staff. It looks at not only everyday goods, but as well as transport, schools and leisure costs. Now, Zurich and Hong Kong were joint second on the list. They would both moved up. Uh, since last year. Geneva and Paris completing the top five. Interestingly, London is in at six and New York at seven. But part of the variation in these rankings is because of currency changes, uh -huh. uh, because they're based in dollars originally. So with the change in the value of the pound, that makes, uh, of course, London would change how expensive that is uh, for companies. But Singapore is still on top. Explains it. I was thinking, I'm sure London must be more expensive than Paris. As ever, Stephen has the answer.